Most of the most sophisticated quant managers do not believe in stop losses. They are viewed as a less efficient way of exiting the trade. If, for example, you hit a level, it feels pretty arbitrary that suddenly it was like, let's say your stop loss is at 10. You buy it at 15. At $10.01, you're still in the trade. At $10, you're completely out. These kind of cliffs, up or down, non-smooth functions are generally frowned upon because they look very arbitrary. Again, there's nothing magical about $10. So if you think that your trade should start making you money right away and it doesn't, then start gradually scaling out of it right away. That would be more conventional. Or if you're measuring the reasons why you thought it was cheap at 15 and you should buy it, and now it's at 10, and the underlying reasons haven't changed, isn't the correct thing to actually buy more? Now that presumes you know everything, okay? So that's also dangerous. But that is a thing that gets done, which is at 15, you buy some, at 14, you buy a little more, 13, you buy a little more. Maybe you have a limit on your position size. So at $9, you're not buying any more than you were, than you had at 10, because you've hit your limit just from a prudence standpoint. But it's kind of a generally smooth function, and maybe it flattens out at some point, but no cliffs, no spikes, because those cliffs and spikes create a kind of an arbitrary point and just makes analyzing things really hard, it makes it hard because they're arbitrary.